the Mardi Gras cake here. What's going on everyone? Dave K here and it's time for our Q1 visit with Michael to Universal Studios. All right. We've got up to quarter annual Universal <laughs> visit. All right. Excited to check out some parks today. A little bit more of that Mardi Gras food. It's going to be fantastic. Mike, anything you want to try food-wise today? I think you mentioned that there was a, um, a special booth that has items that kind of rotate. That's one I really do want to try because I've heard that some of the food from that spot that rotates food is some of the best. Yeah, last time I had that was fantastic. Let's see what we can grab here today food-wise. Check out some new rides or some classic rides and have a fun-filled day. So Mike n might not be here as long as I am today and we're debating what he'd like to do and he's discussing Rip Ride Rocket, which is a fun coaster, but I told him how intense it is and how I feel like it goes from very intense to very mild, whereas Hulk is consistently smooth. Mike, your thoughts, what are you thinking about Rip Ride Rocket? Is it something you're interested in doing or you still have some hesitation there? I have a ton of hesitation about it, but I feel like you gotta kinda do these things when you feel like you can, like haven't, you know, didn't eat too much earlier, like your empty stomach and feeling a little bit more up to it because it's, you know, earlier in the day. Right. It may be. Makes sense. And you know, you've never done it before. It's true. You know, it's nice to be able to capture those new things, check out new adventures and try new things. And I can see where you're coming from on this one. Again, it's not necessarily my favorite. I wouldn't go out of my way for this one. But to experience it since we're here, I can see why you have that interest. So maybe what? We'll keep thinking about it and see what uh, we come up with? I might walk up to it, look around a little bit, and then determine. Okay, sounds good. And this is also the park if we want to grab some snacks while you're here. Fair so point. We can do that as well. All right, Mike has come to a decision, Mike. What are you thinking? I think I'm gonna try it. Okay. This could change as we walk closer, but I think I'm gonna try it just to, you know, to experience it. Cause I think you gotta experience things while you can. There it is. So it sounds like we're going for it today. Rip Red Rocket, not my favorite coaster at Universal. A Hulk coaster is probably that number one. All right, Hagrid's, excuse me, excuse me. But it is a fun one. You may as well check it out and get back on it. I wanna say this is my third time ever on this one. So nice to be able to come back and check it out. One thing I don't love, Mike and I were just discussing, is I have to leave my sunglasses in that locker as well with all my other stuff when I'm going on this attraction. And, you know, it's tough because it's so bright out right now. You can see the sun is out. So it makes it a little bit tougher to be able to fully enjoy the attraction. You can't really look. It's too bright to open your eyes. So that's why I kind of like to go later in the evening. But hopefully they'll have a solution for this in the future. What? All right, in the locker you go. See you soon. Just got off Rip Ride Rocket yet again. I feel like it's quite a bumpy one. Again, I feel like my head's rattling around all over the place. I think I'm gonna fly out of a vehicle. But it is a fun one. And I had a new song this time I liked even more. Was the, what was it? It was Black Eyed Peas, which I like. Mike, what did you think of your first time ever on Rip Ride Rocket? I gotta tell you, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Of the coasters that I've been on, but, and taking Hagrid's off for a moment. Hagrid's doesn't count here. This is my favorite. Hagrid's right. is the best, no doubt about it, but I love this one. I think the fact that you get to pick your own music and it's not as many upside down moments is what I like a lot about it and the theming with it, with that music. Again, the music did it all for me. Okay, so Mike prefers this one to Hulk. I prefer Hulk. I guess it just depends on your style, right? What kind of coaster you like. But glad to know there's some great options out there. And now that we're off Rip Ride Rocket, you'll see that puts us right across from, oh yeah, it's the Mardi Gras event with some of the food tasting. Let's see what's in that new booth here for the new country and maybe check out some other stuff, maybe some of those classics. Let's see what sounds good. Walking up to the Mardi Gras booths here and it looks like they're all closed. Not really sure why this is. We're gonna have to figure this one out, but all these booths are kind of covered over here, wrapped. I'm not seeing hours anywhere, so maybe we'll see if maybe there's something written on that one. It tells us some hours, but strange to see they're all closed up here. I didn't realize they had certain hours they were open or closed. I would imagine around lunchtime they'd be open, but maybe it's just later in the day, I don't know. And we heard from a team member that these tents don't open until 3.30 or 4. I would have figured they'd do lunch as well as dinner, but I guess not. And so maybe we'll get something from this tent up here or something else somewhere else around here. But it's too bad they're not open this early. It'd be nice to be able to try some stuff. So that tent by the Mardi Gras event only had that slushy, which does sound good, but doesn't sound like a lunch to me. And so we're going to check out Richter's Burgers up there. Mike's leading the way to Richter's Burgers. And we'll be continuing our adventure down that way, see what else we can find food-wise. Harry Potter always sounds good, but we have eaten at Harry Potter, and there's so many things to try, so we'll have to see what sounds good. 
So here is Richter's Burger Co. We can see a lot of those drinks look a lot like some of the ones we've seen at the other uh, places here, like the Krusty Burger. I don't know about that. And you've got Aftershock, the big one, a couple other burgers and healthier choices, but I don't know. I'm also looking on my phone here to see what other dining venues look good. Some casual dining, see what's around on the map. And there's quite a few options as well. All right, so looked at the app, saw a couple of different options. Bumblebee's Tacos, one of these days, maybe we'll try. The Monsters has some sort of restaurant by that uh, same area as the Mardi Gras event. And NBC's Today Cafe up front looks good too. But today, I'm thinking we're gonna do, Mike, what are we gonna do? Harry Potter and Leaky Cauldron. All right, going to Leaky Cauldron. Maybe we'll try some new menu items just to be able to share those different things with you. Cause that's such a good food spot. I feel like that's number one in the park. So we gotta, we gotta have some more of that. A lot of great looking options as always. There's a cottage pie, fisherman's pie. I wanna try to try something new, but you know the fish and chips are awesome. I had the toad in the hole, but I enjoyed that quite a bit. Bangers and mash, another option here. Banger sandwich, chicken sandwich. We'll have to see what sounds good here. So we have changed our mind and we're gonna go for the Today Cafe up front. We can hear the dragon. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know how well that picture came out, but hopefully you could see him breathe some fire back there. He just breathe fire. I can hear, hear him grumbling. Mike, what'd you think? Awesome. Had you seen that before? No. Okay. No. I'm glad I was able to give you that warning. You hear him grumbling like that, he's about to breathe fire. So, Michael is thinking about a variety of food options. Where are we going, Mike? I was thinking the uh, the NBC Cafe, but Bumblebee's Tacos is kind of like on the way, so at least we'll look. All right, well, I guess we'll take a look and see how these things look menu-wise, and we'll figure out where we want to go from there. Walking by Bumblebee's now, and it smells really good. The line's pretty long there, too. Kind of as long at Harry Potter as well. But we'll have to see what we think of this menu, see if we think it's worthwhile. Mike, which way are you leaning? Probably NBC today. Okay. The line's a little bit too long? A uh, little bit, and also feeling like something like uh, NBC food. Okay, sounds good. Look at these monkeys swinging around here with some photos with Dora the Explorer as we're making our way up front. Nice to see. Check out Hello Kitty out here. I don't think I've seen Hello Kitty before. Nice to get some pictures there as well. Here we are in Today Cafe. Take a look around. You can see kind of bright, nice orange style here. Look at that menu over there. Oh, Mike's got something interesting on the menu over there. Just like right through the glass. Let's take, ooh, ooh, ooh. Hold on a second here. These items look crazy good. Look at that Bananas Foster croissant over there. That Linzer torch right there, oh my gosh. And then of course some of these sandwiches. The Carnegie Owl's Southern Chicken Biscuit right there. Ooh, that sounds great. A little bit small. Looks good. The Bulls and the Bears, is that what that is? A uh, little Italy Caprese. Oh my gosh, all extremely good looking right here. Oh, look at that 30 Rock Midtowner. Looks fantastic. And I think Michael's pulling out this Napoleon right here. And these are players. Oh my gosh, those look crazy good. And we went ahead and ordered a couple sandwiches. The 30 Rock one, we've got the Mulberry Street Italian, and we got the Mardi Gras cake here. Look at that, looks fantastic. I was told kind of a dulce de leche to it. Oh my gosh, looks fantastic, but I don't know about all these sugars though. All those sugars though. And here we have, you've got the Mardi Gras cake right here. Right here is that Mulberry Street Italian. We take a look inside, a lot of meats in there, some arugula and that kind of thing, the fruit cup on that one because we wanted to try both. And the other one has the potato salad and that's the 30 Rock right there. So we'll see how both of these taste, how all of them taste, that cake as well. Looks fantastic. Mike, which one do you think is gonna be better? I'm thinking the 30 Rock yeah. probably, but still very excited. Yeah, we both were eyeing that one, so I think I think you're right, but we'll, we'll see what happens. We are trying the Mulberry Street Italian first. Look at that roll of meat right there in the middle. Looks fantastic. And you can see inside the other one as well, some of that sauce in there. I'll let you know how this one tastes. Just had the sandwiches and the sides here at Today Cafe. I gotta tell you, I actually think that Mulberry Street Italian was the winner of the two sandwiches. Both really, really good quality. I feel like in park food, this is some of the best. Right behind Harry Potter, Today Cafe is the winner so far for me. I personally also like the potato salad over the fruit salad. I feel like there were some amazing flavors in that potato salad. I'm not sure what it was. Some sort of sweet green sauce that went with the potato salad. Amazing. So if I were coming back, potato salad and the Mulberry Street Italian, all very, very good. I could eat any of it again, but those would be my top two. I'd give it overall, in terms of sandwiches here, I want to give it like an eight, but uh, it's, it's, I wouldn't necessarily call it 
best suit ever must come back to it, but it comes right after Harry Potter for me. Mike, what did you think of these food options here? I totally agree. I think the Italian was the winner here. We haven't tried the cake yet, but that was really, really good. In terms of like universal overall, this is second place. I totally agree behind all the Harry Potter food. What did you think of that potato salad as well? It was good, but I'd just go with the, maybe just the Italian, and it was okay. Potato salad, it's only okay for me. So would you get the fruit salad instead? Yes, oh. without the fresh pineapple. Okay, so there you go, depending upon what you like. Mike and I both went for that Italian, but it's the, uh, it's the fruit cup for Mike versus the potato cup for me. Just finished that Mardi Gras cake, and you'd be surprised, both Mike and I did not really love that cake at all. I feel like it was really, not great, you know. They said it was dulce de leche, that sort of thing, but it really didn't taste that sweet at all or that flavorful. Really uh, not a big fan on that one. I, I definitely would not get the one again. Mike, what did you think of that cake? I would not get the cake, not even for a moment, but the sandwiches, I'd go and get these sandwiches. They're really good. Yes, so sandwiches, 100% worthwhile here. The ca that Mardi Gras cake, 100%, I would skip. I was recommended it by the woman at the register, and unfortunately, I'm just not a huge fan of this one. I, I Again, it, they, she said it was dulce de leche, and I do like those sorts of flavors, but I feel like this one just wasn't it. And now Mike is leaving us for, can you guess where? Look at his shirt, look at his wristband. Disney World! Look at his smile, <laughs> look at his hat. Enjoy Disney, Mike. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, now time for some Dave solo adventures at Universal. I'm thinking I do have a pass that some friends gave me, thank you very much, for an attraction. So maybe I'll see if Hagrid's looks like an option for that one. Maybe we'll make our way over to Islands of Adventure. That being said, Despicable Me is only 25 minutes for the regular line, so I think I'll jump in the single rider queue up there. A couple things I want to do today, use up some of this lanyard for Mardi Gras and just enjoy some of those Mardi Gras festivities, and of course, use that express pass. Check out our minion dancing over here. All right, got some nice dance moves They're going on. I like it, it's very nice. Nice to check out the Minions 3D attraction yet again. I was in row five this time, and I feel like the odd numbered rows are the best because there's kind of two benches per sort of levels, like three levels, like stairs. So I'm in the front row of that third level, which was nice. And I never noticed some of the effects before. You kind of get water sprayed on you. There's some LEDs in there in addition to the shaking. It's a very fun ride. Only 10 minutes for Shrek 4D, so I, I think I'll do it. So Shrek 4D looks like it's only a 10 minute wait. And when I went on the Minions, it was a walk-on for single rider, which was fantastic. Let's see if I can get in this next showing here of Shrek 4D, because it makes for a great show as well. And then of course later I want to head to the other park, see if I can use that pass on maybe Hagrid's. I love that one. Just finished with Shrek 4D, and that's always a great one. Was pretty much a walk-on here today as well, which is fantastic. Always love those quick moving ride queues. I feel like the ride itself was longer than the queue, but you can see it's quite crowded out here today. Lots of movement going on. Now making our way over to Harry Potter, hopefully to take that train over to the other park. Would love to catch that ride to the other park so we can catch some of those rides. Just got off that Shrek ride, and I absolutely love that one. It was a walk-on here today, which was fantastic. Walked right into that torture chamber. And I really do enjoy this show. It's nice 4D effects. One thing I hadn't realized before is you get soaked, not soaked, but you get sprayed with water like four times on this one. It just keeps soaking you on that one. So something to watch out for if you're trying to not get wet. It's not terribly wet, you know, just a little bit wet on that one, but Definitely a great show. I love the story that they tell with it. Now I'm gonna see if I can catch the Hogwarts Express, make it over to the other park for a Hagrid's ride before trying some snacks here tonight for Mardi Gras. And I'm thinking maybe I can even sign up for a virtual queue to ride on one of those floats. That'd be awesome. But we'll have to see how that goes here tonight. And it does seem to be fairly crowded in the parks here today. Although it was a walk on on Shrek, it's two and a half hours, I think, over on Hagrid's. And again, it really depends where you are in the park or I guess what time of day it is for those crowds. So really interesting how those can vary so much in one day. I think this is the closest I've been to the train as it's passing by, making our way out here. Right by the sort of front area of the queue. There it goes, see it real soon. Now back in Hogsmeade, see if we can catch that Hagrid's ride. Looking forward to this one. And I think I need to get some water as well. Forgot my water bottle today, so you gotta stay hydrated out here one way or another. Now making my way to Hogsmeade for Hagrid's adventure. I'm gonna need to grab some water in a bit as well. And then at some point I'll make my way back to the other park for Mardi Gras. But for now, we'll check this one out. So thanks to some very kind friends, I'm using this pass here, which looks like it's kind of like an express pass, but there's no express for Hagrid's right now. It's just kind of a 
admission pass or I don't know extra pass and the single riders closed right now too it seems like they're not doing single rider so glad to be making my way through here and thank you again for sending it. I feel like I've never quite been in these caverns here I'm not really sure uh, where this route has taken us uh, must be something special going on today I'm not sure and they don't have an express pass here at Hagrid's but we get dropped in right there we have that special other pass here so any other passes it looks like that's where we get dropped in and it should be pretty efficient we'll see how long it takes and it took me about 25 minutes instead of that hour it seemed like it was taking the single riders to get through that queue so thank you so much again for sending that it's coming up in a soon mail time so you hear about it but i had to use the pass before it went bad and thanks for letting me know that i had to use it up as well now maybe back to mardi gras and in case you're wondering when that next mail time might be i'm still waiting until i have enough mail to be able to do it now something i'm noticing with these queues is the kind of hosts of the queues are saying fill in all available space as you're scanning your ticket but there are lines. Uh, I think it's just that people aren't seeing the lines and they're finding it more efficient to say, fill in all available face space. So it gets really confusing with guests kinda all trying to go through the same area when you get to that point where there's only two lines or four lines to scan your ticket. So that's a little bit tricky. Maybe something that'll get worked out in the future, but it's what it is. Now 25 minute wait and we'll be in the other park. It seems to just get more and more crowded here as the day progresses at Universal. You can see what some of these crowds look like here today. And we're making our way over to the Mardi Gras event. Maybe check out some new food here. I'm not extremely hungry yet though, so maybe I'll just take a lap around, see what the food options are, see if there's anything new, and figure out where I want to go from there. It seems like our Mardi Gras character friends are out and about. You can see everyone from Still Walkers here to some of those feathered friends. And I'm excited to see what the food looks like here today, too. So I got a couple of pictures, and I'm pretty tempted at some point by this king cake slushy. I've seen some others drinking that, and it does look pretty good, but we'll see how today goes. Here we've got the plantains, as well as what looks like the cheesy bread over there for the Brazil menu. They're having a couple different things shown there, but they're both covered on the menu here today for this Brazil kiosk and I can get either of them with my lanyard. So we'll see if we end up going for that here momentarily. Both of them look really, really good. Uh, and that cheese bread, I've had something like that in the past. It's fantastic. So I'm thinking there's a good chance I'll go for it here in a bit, but we'll see how things go. And you'll see a dance party going on in the streets here as well for Mardi Gras. Looks like a fun time, I like it. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more time to get hungry here, maybe catch a couple rides. Look like Men in Black and Simpsons are both only 20 minutes, and then maybe come back for some food. A couple of those items I do wanna try. I've been told if you knock on one of these doors, you see something in one of the windows, but I'm not really sure where it is. Much people are running around trying to see it right now. Oops, maybe over here. People are looking, oh yeah, you can see a little, oh, ho, ho. a little troll up in this window right here. Look at this window open. See if we can get a good view. Oh, there you go, right there. You can see him sticking his head out right there. Beautiful. Awesome. Nice to see. Nice job. Coming up on Men in Black once again here. You can see this iconic entryway with those two UFOs up there. Let's see what single rare wait time looks like here today. So it sounds like the regular wait time is now up to 35 minutes. But let's see how long single rider takes. On this one, it's usually very quick. So we'll find out here in a minute. I scored a 356,000 this time around, pretty good. I feel like I'm slowly improving on this one too. And it was a walk on for the single rider queue. Walked straight onto the attraction, was fantastic. Let's see what else we can do before food time. 10 minute wait time for Krusty Land, oh yeah. And also look at all these names of these attractions around here, the little games, I Caramba is good. Help Santa's Little Helper, so many great ones. Let's jump in Krusty's mouth here and check out this attraction. First time heading to level three here on this one, at least I think I've been on that one before, but not this one. So I stay to the left at that kind of convergence point. You can go, it looks like right, sort of this way on the left, closer and the further on the left. Maybe there's only three options or maybe there's more. Maybe I have been this way too. I don't, I don't think I have, but maybe I have. I think there's one above us too though. So maybe there's four. Check out this view here from level three. I think this might even be the highest there is actually. I don't think I've been up this high. We'll see how it goes on the ride. Looks like I'm in the front row spot here in row two. You can see the countdown timer right there until the next ride. You get to see these kind of fun displays here. Ghost busting with that haunted condo, the ticketing booth over there. Nice to see all the little details here in the queue. So that concludes the Simpsons attraction. 
And that was definitely the highest I've been on the ride vehicle. Never been on this third row before, way up near the top of the attraction. I saw new views, new sights that I hadn't seen before, but I still like around that middle row or lower down where I've sat in the past. Not to mention, it's quite a trek to get back down to that ground floor from the exit here. But it was a great one. It was pretty much a walk on here as well. So it's interesting to see that there can be a lot of crowds in the parks, but not so many on the rides. Now, let's maybe check out some food or maybe another ride or two first. I'd love to check out E.T. again. But last time I checked that one, the ride was a little bit long, and we'll see what it looks like. So I've checked my app a couple of times, but it doesn't seem like I can reserve a spot for the Mardi Gras parade. It seems like for the bead throwing on the Mardi Gras floats, it's probably full up. I'm probably gonna have to book that sooner than the, the day of in the future. So that's something I'm gonna have to look into. But I think it is now a good time to grab some of those food items we haven't had the chance to try quite yet. I don't think I've noticed the annual pass holder zone before here for the parades, looks like kind of covered area for the annual pass holder. So if I wanted to jump in there to show my annual pass and I can sit in that special zone for parade viewing, maybe it would be less crowded. For starters, I've got the Pau de Queijo. I've, I've got the cheesy bread. I got the cheesy bread from that uh, Brazil kiosk, the one that is around the world, the one that keeps changing. And take a look at that cheesy bread right here. It's got, I think they said some sort of mango guava sauce or something along those lines. Definitely gonna let you know how this one is. It does seem a little bit small. You know, only four pieces of cheesy bread here. But I'm very hopeful for it because I've had some great cheesy bread in the past. So this cheesy bread is really unique. I feel like it doesn't have necessarily as much flavor as some of the cheesy bread that I've had in the past. It could be cheesier is what I'm saying. And that guava mango sauce is kind of a weird flavor to it. I feel like it definitely has a lot more flavor than the cheesy bread. So if you like the flavor of this sauce, you're gonna like dipping the cheesy bread in it. But I feel like it does kind of take away from the flavor of that cheesy bread. They're two such unique and different flavors. But the cheese bread's okay. The dipping sauce is very unique, it's okay as well. Not my favorite item here. Definitely still recommending that uh, po' boy, the shrimp po' boy, I think it was. That one was the winner. Back into the booths here. I didn't feel like that was the most protein-y or most filling dish, so I wanna see if I can find something more kind of like a meal here. Let's see what we got. The challenge I'm running into here is I feel like there's just so few tents in order to be able to grab food from. I feel like po' boy is really the only option in terms of a filling menu item. Uh, I feel like a lot of other food festivals I've been to, and you may see some new ones recently. You may see some new ones coming up, including Seven Seas Food Festival. I don't know if you check that one out. I feel like a lot of those other festivals have a lot more options. So still looking to see if I can find something else, but it seems like I've pretty much made the loop a couple times and I've had most of them. The tried and true shrimp and sausage. Oh boy, right here. Gotta love those flavors. I feel like, you know, I'm not sure Maybe I'm just crazy. I feel like, yeah, I, first I thought it was fried last time, but now I remember it was not fried last time. So this looks fantastic. After this one, I'm thinking I am gonna make my way over to the, uh, the what's it called? The King Cake Slushy. I think that'd be nice. I've seen that one, looks really good. Here we have the King Cake Slushy. I've heard this one is really good. Looking forward to giving it a shot, let you know if this is maybe one of the best dessert items here at the Mardi Gras Festival for Universal. It, it definitely looks nice, you know, it's not too flashy with those colors. But I don't know, it's got, it's got some nice green, yellow, and purple to it. And here is that king cake slushy in a cup. Definitely looks fantastic. With, again, a little bit of sprinkles on the top there. The green, purple, and yellow. And let's see how this one tastes. Catching a bit of the parade now as well. I feel like they've added even more here to the Mardi Gras festivities, which is awesome. Continuing to see these floats a little bit while I'm drinking this shake. All right. So I gotta say this King Cake slushy is really only okay. It's really thick. I feel like it's kind of thick and not as liquidy as it should be. It's like pure icy in a sense, but again, it's kind of pure ice that I'm having to break up. So definitely not my favorite. I do like it more than the beignets, but definitely would not get this one again. I feel bad because I kind of recommended it to someone. I'm like, well, this is what I'm getting, and I didn't love the beignets because the person was getting the beignets. But, you know, this is how we try it. This is how we learn. Now I can tell you, I'd probably skip that dessert booth all together on this one. Try one of those other items. Personally, uh, that faux lorry, when it was there, was really, really good in terms of tasting like a dessert item. I think the parade is one of my favorite parts here of the Mardi Gras festivities, you can see. It almost feels like they're adding new clothes, too. Like, if you look at this skull one here, and another one was the, the people dressed in black, a couple of dancers in black there with the black umbrellas. Seemed pretty new to me as well. 
<laughs> a bit more of a review here on this king cake slushy. I feel like the flavor is pretty good, but where it comes in, I feel like an opportunity needs improvement is the consistency. Again, really thick and icy. I feel like I'm chopping it up with this straw here. I've already gone through a couple of paper straws to make it happen, so something to keep in mind. Take a look at that consistency there. Almost like ice chips in that shake. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the easiest thing to drink. So again, I skipped that dessert kiosk, but great festival overall. I definitely enjoy all the festivities here. And that concludes today's Universal Festivities. What did you think of today's adventure? And what's your favorite thing about the Mardi Gras Festival at Universal? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know you liked it. And of course, if you haven't already for more fun adventures, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed of those future adventures. And until next time, play on. So Mike not be, Mike, so Mike not,